Hi guys, it's your science teacher here with a video. This time it is all on P13, which is the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, in this topic, we go over and look at uh, different types of waves and how we use them waves and also a little bit of the dangers of some of the waves. So without further ado, let's get into this topic. Let's start off the topic by looking at what electromagnetic waves actually are. And electromagnetic waves are a form of transverse waves and they form a continuous spectrum, meaning some are really big, some have large wavelengths and some have extremely small wavelengths. And with EM waves, a really cool property is all of them can travel through a vacuum. And what a vacuum uh, basically is, it's, it's deep space. There's no particles inside there. We can artificially create vacuums now. Now we can split uh, the electromagnetic spectrum into seven key categories with radio waves being my largest wave in my spectrum and gamma rays being the smallest wave, meaning they have the smallest wavelength. And we actually need to remember the order of our electromagnetic spectrum. And to remember the order of the electromagnetic spectrum, what you could do is you could come up with a quick mnemonic uh, in order to remember the order of the different waves. For example, one that I've just uh, put down here is real monkeys insist very useful Xmas gifts. And you could just remember that phrase and that would help you remember the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, if we look at this electromagnetic spectrum, you'll notice the radio waves have the largest wavelength. However, they have the lowest frequency. And this means it's also the lowest energy. That means that gamma rays have the highest frequency and the highest energy as well. And this will be significant later on when we look at uh, which types of radiation are ionizing as well. To give some perspective of the size of these waves, what I've done here is I've also got approximate scale of the wavelengths here as well. So radio waves are about the size of buildings, uh, microwaves can be between the size of humans to butterflies, infrared the size of needle points, uh, visible light the size of some cells, single cellular organisms, UV molecules, X-rays like the size of an atom, and a gamma ray is the size of a nuclear in, nucleus in an atom. And the reason why we split up the electromagnetic spectrum into seven key categories is because the waves show different properties at these different wavelengths, and therefore they can have different uses. Let's now start to look at the uses of the different EM waves. Let's start off by looking at the largest wave of them all, which is, of course, radio waves. And radio waves are primarily used in communication. This can be from radio stations all around the country. They all have different frequencies. You notice uh, when you are tuning your radio, you have to turn uh, the little knob round and it will uh, give you a different radio station depending on what frequency you are listening to. And you'll actually sometimes get a bit of interference if there are two radio stations working on similar frequencies. Microwaves are also used in communication as well. Microwaves are used because of the fact uh, they can send information to satellites. Uh, they travel better through space and that's why microwaves are often used as well. The reason why radio waves and microwaves are so good at this job is because they travel really long distances without changing. Also, they are relatively safe, meaning they can pass through our bodies and not cause any problems with our cells. If we go a bit larger than microwaves and uh, radio waves though, we get to infrared waves. And infrared waves are really cool. Uh, anything that gives out heat, uh, is a form of infrared radiation. It's important to remember that. Um, so heat is infrared, 
but also our TV remotes uh, use infrared as well. Um, what happens is your TV remote sends out an infrared wave and that is picked up uh, by your box at home and it changes the channel for you. Also thermal imaging, if you've ever watched David Attenborough when he's filming wildlife at night, you'll notice he uses an infrared camera. This picks up the heat emitted by an animal and you can see it even in the dark. Getting into the higher waves of the spectrum, basically anything past visible light, uh, you end up with ionizing radiation. So if the wavelength is greater than visible light, we are now in the ionizing radiation. And this type of radiation can be quite dangerous because the fact it's ionizing, this means that it can kill cells. And too much exposure to any ionizing radiation has the chance of causing cancer by killing cells and mutating cells. The smallest type of ionizing radiation is UV radiation. And you probably know that UV radiation is emitted by the sun. And this is the reason why you have to wear sun, sun cream lotion when you are at the beach is because of the fact that UV radiation can be quite dangerous and it can actually cause skin cancer in high enough quantities. We do sometimes make use of UV radiation uh, in sunbeds, but it's also used for other purposes. For example, checking real banknotes as well. Uh, you can use UV radiation for that. Going even higher in energy, you get to X-rays. And you probably know what X-rays are used for. You can see broken bones with X-rays. Uh, you probably noticed, even when you go to the doctors, say for example, if you've had an x-ray because you've broken a bone, I know a lot of people have broken bones and I know you've probably had an x-ray before, but you've probably noticed as well that the doctor actually leaves the room uh, when he's giving you an, uh, an x-ray. And the reason for this is so that he doesn't have repeated exposure of this x-ray throughout the day. Because like I said, x-rays are an ionizing radiation. If we go uh, to gamma radiation, this is of course the highest energy radiation and it is still got some uses. Uh, it's used in many cancer treatments. You've probably heard of radiotherapy. That is actually a mixture of gamma rays and x-rays that are fired at the cancer cells and uh, this causes them cells to die. It causes even healthy cells to die as well and that causes some of the uh, side effects of radiotherapy but it fires really high energy waves at the infected area causing them to die and that's making use of the fact that it's an ionizing radiation. However obviously you do not want to get repeat exposure to gamma radiation. A cool property of electromagnetic waves is that they all travel at the same speed through a vacuum and you've probably heard of the term speed of light. And this is the speed of all EM waves through a vacuum, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And from uh, the last topic of wave properties, uh, we remember that wave speed is equal to frequency times by our wavelength. And that means that we automatically know the wave speed for all EM waves going through a vacuum. And if we know one of these properties, we can work out the other. So for example, if I knew the wavelength, I could calculate the frequency and then work out the type of wave that I have. And this is a typical exam question. They would usually tell you its frequency or its wavelength and expect you to remember that its wave speed is three times 10 to the eight through a vacuum. From this, you might also be asked uh, to look and say, for example, if you work out that the frequency is times 10 to the 11 hertz, and you'd be expected to be able to estimate what wave this could be, and you could go back to your EM spectrum and look, and a sensible estimation would be something like microwaves or infrared. This was only a short topic, uh, so that is the end of the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please remember to drop it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.